praise God, praise God. Let the people of God say amen, amen. I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast, a weekly Bible teaching program from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization, a unit of Eternal Food Ministry, where we edify, we exhort, and we challenge believers to the Great Commission. Here, we also call sinners to salvation through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are going to be talking about a beautiful, beautiful topic. And the topic says, what is love? What is love? Is a word that is used in every language. Um, and people misuse it a lot. I love my dog, I love my food. I love my husband, I love my children, I love my country. So we want to talk about what is love, okay? Uh, our case study is going to be King David, and your short reading is First Samuel, I've read it, chapter 16, verse 1, we stop at 13. First Samuel, chapter 16, verses 1 to 13. But before we start unpacking, let us pray. Father, thank you. Dear Father God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, we praise your holy name. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your compassion on the world. As terrible as the world has been behaving towards you, your loving kindness is still sustaining the world. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for loving us so much that you died for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you love us so much that you be dwelling in us in these imperfect bodies to help us in our Christian journey. Father, we have come to your table. Feed us, we pray, O oh Lord. O oh, sweet, blessed Holy Spirit, let the light of the word of God open our eyes and our heart that it may mix with faith in us and do us good. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Our foundation text is the epistle to the church at Corinth, chapter 13, verse 13. The first epistle, known as 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 13. 13. And now abide faith, love, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. You see, when we get to heaven, we're not going to need faith anymore. Because our faith will now become sight. We see the Lord Jesus. We see heaven. And we won't need to hope anymore because instead of hoping, now we'll be in heaven, but love will still continue. Amen. So we want to talk about what is love. We are going to consider three types of love, okay, to help us understand what kind of love is the Lord Jesus Christ talking about. Uh, to his disciples. A lot of people will say, uh, uh, the Lord Jesus said, love your enemies. And I, I like to tell people, God is not asking you to, if you're a rape victim, that you should go have coffee with, with your tormentor, that somebody that attacked you in the past. That's not the kind of love that, that the Bible is talking about. So we want to know what is love. So let's consider three uh uh, types of love are uh, actually the Greek scholars they, they, they said it's four, but for the sake of this lesson, to make things simple, we are going to uh, short it down to three. The first one is physical love. The Greek word for this is eros, from which we got the word erotic. It is passionate love mostly steeped in physical attraction and intimacy. Physical love, please track with me, physical love at its best 
stirred by physical beauty, uh, but at its worst, is not more than animalistic instinct coming out of humans. So at its, at its best, is stirred by physical beauty. But at its worst, it's not more than expre expression of animalistic instincts. Why this love is only skin deep? There is nothing wrong, please listen carefully, in appreciating beauty. Nothing is wrong with that. However, when major life's decisions are solely based on physical features or aesthetic things, values that you see, then such love is capable of destroying, derailing, and denting the life of those involved. I wish we had the time. Examples upon people and many statues. I mean, a lot of people have gone into wrong marriages because of that. Just because she's rich, or he's rich, she's beautiful. A lot of people have jumped into picking up wrong jobs, buying the wrong houses, because it looks good, you see. The Lord Jesus, even though created every beautiful thing that we can see, had no beauty, beauty in his physical form according to the book of Isaiah, that we should desire him. That's Isaiah 53 verse 2, you see. This is to show us that our definition of beauty is different from God's definition of beauty. We look at outward appearance, but God looks on the inside. See, the word ugly I, I am very careful when I use that word. I, I usually use it around my family when I'm talking about somebody acting ugly or that person was ugly. I never refer to the physical. I believe everybody is beautiful, seriously. Uh, everybody made by God. I don't believe there are ugly people, no. But somebody could be the most beautiful person in the world and be the ugliest at the, at the same time. Why? Because of their inside, you see. This also shows why God's choice many times, because God sees differently. So this explains why God's choice many times usually seem to be at odds with what we should have chosen. Physical love cannot fully satisfy or fulfill God's purpose for our lives. It can fade as time goes on or when, when the challenges of life hit. This is why physical love can and is often polluted. A lot of people when they marry somebody because they're pretty, or they get a job because the package of that job is beautiful. When challenges of life begin, then everything begins to give way because it cannot hold life together. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 2. 2 Samuel 11, 2. And this is the story of David, how his eyes of looking at physical beauty got him in trouble. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman bathing. And the woman was very beautiful to behold. You see, that's the story of King David and Bathsheba. If you're a Bible student, you will know that's about the best part of that story. Because after that, all hell broke loose on David, on his family. I mean, he, he never enjoyed that woman, you see. Because from there, things just went down south. 
So if you are listening to me or you are watching and all your life you based your decisions on what you can see is dangerous, especially if you're a child of God. You want to take your decisions to God. He's the one who see the challenges ahead of him and he will be able to direct you accordingly. The surface is a veil atop the truth at the root. Let me say that slowly because somebody needs to hear this. The surface is a veil atop the truth at the root. Moving on. Natural love. We have talked about physical love. Now let's talk about natural love. This type of love has been divided into two kinds by Greek scholars. But for the sake of this lesson, we are going to put the two together under natural love. One is called sturge or sturgy, and the other one is phileo from the word, um, uh, from where we call Philadelphia. So it's called brotherly love. The first type of love, sturge or sturgy, being a type of a naturally occurring love between husband and wife, parents and uh, children, or siblings. That is one type of love, sturge or sturge or sturge. And that um, is enforced, is natural. Now the second type is phileo. And this is called brotherly love. And it usually happens between best friends, close circle, uh, best friends. Uh, it's a, a kind of affection, warmth between two friends, and you are seeking the good of the other one, of the other person. You, you, you are looking at ways to make your friend happy. The, your friend is looking at ways to make you happy. You're looking out for each other. This type of love uh, in the scripture uh, was best um, illustrated by the friendship of Jonathan and King David before he became King David. And the Bible says that Jonathan loved David even as his own soul. This type of love involves the soul where we have our emotions and feelings. However, listen up, circumstances of life are capable of blemishing this love since it, it is still within the human realm. Like Jonathan, as much as Jonathan loved David, Jonathan's father, King Saul, almost killed Jonathan because of David. But guess what? In the end, when push came to shove, Jonathan chose to go with his daddy to war and you know, he walked away from David, you see. So even this love also can be punctured because we are still imperfect. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 49, verse 15. Isaiah 49, 15. It says, can a woman forget her sucking or nursing child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea. They may forget, yet will I not forget thee. That is God speaking to you, you see. And this, this can happen. I mean, there can be trouble between uh, mother and children. And then people will just go their separate ways because we still live in imperfect worlds. Stuff happens within families, you see. And if you're, in, if you're in that position and you're like, it, it, it feels like everything is coming to an end for you. No, look up to God. Look up to God. Look up to God. He will guide you. Okay. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 27, verse 10. Psalm 27, 10. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. I've, I've seen many brothers and sisters whose parents literally disinherited them and kicked them out of the family for their faith in Christ Jesus, you see. They were supposed to experience 
that natural love from their parents. But that love was punctured, you see. But here the Bible is saying, even if you were forsaken by your families, the Lord himself will pick you up, okay? Imperfect people living in imperfect world can only give you imperfect love. Let me say that again. If you are in that shoe today and you are mad at your families, you are mad at your mom, at your, at your dad or brothers and sisters because they have betrayed you, because they have kicked you out of the family, drop it. Don't hurt yourself any further. Give that hurt to God. I want you to remember that imperfect people living in imperfect world can only give you imperfect love. Moving on. The third type of love is sacrificial love. And we're going to take some time here. This is agapao. That's the Greek word for that, or agape. Unlike eros or phileo, which involve physical features and natural feelings, sacrificial love, that is agape love, goes beyond that. Listen up. It is an act of will, you choose, in which the individual decides to show love for no personal motive or benefit for loving the other person. This type of love may be considered foolish or contrary to human reasoning or reaction because it is one-sided. Sacrificial love is not contingent on the other person's behavior, no. They may be acting crazy, and most of the time they are acting crazy, but you are not, you see. Now, is it reactionary to their behavior? The Lord Christ Jesus is the epitome, he, he, he personified sacrificial love. Listen up. If you are still holding on to anger, to hate because of somebody, listen up. While you and I were of no use to God, we were totally useless to God and were still his enemies, spiritually dead by living sinful life, Christ Jesus released himself to be crucified for us. What did you do? Huh? How much did you give the Lord Jesus before he died for you? How much? Huh? The Lord Jesus took the guilt of our sin and died in a place on the cross. You see. Why? Because God wanted to restore the father-child relationship that Adam destroyed in the garden, you see. And that is why the Lord Jesus took a human form. That's why he didn't come like an angel. That's why he didn't come in his power as God. He, 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 he humbled himself and he was born like a child, like all of us, to identify with us, you see. So he can, so he could look like us and be our representative. This agape love of Christ set believers free from the grip of the devil. Hallelujah. This agape love of our Lord Jesus upholds us in our commitment to follow and obey Christ. It enables us to forgive people we would not have forgiven or help people that won't be able to help us back when we need help. That is the love of Christ. People who won't be able to repay us back when we do good to them. That is the love of Christ. God protected the descendants of David solely because of David's fear and honor for God by showing this kind of sacrificial love to those who hated David, to those who betrayed him, 
Those who wanted him dead, he forgave them. In fact, in some cases, he even had um, a, a party, if you will, in honor of some of them, like Abner. Abner that followed King Saul. And together, for years, they were, they were hunting for, for the life of David like a partridge. When Abner came back after Saul was killed, David said, Kill, killed animals. Cook, come on, let's make a feast for Abner, you see. He forgave Shimei. He forgave Absalom that wanted him dead. Nabal. I mean, those are just few examples of people that David could have killed, but he forgave them. He didn't have anything to lose by uh, forgiving them. Or anything to gain, I'm sorry. He didn't have anything to gain. But you know what? He is he's like, let me just forgive them. He forgave them, not because they were going to give him something. No. But he forgave them because like he told Joab, he said, if God had not kept my life, I would have died. So why do you want to kill them? You see, not because he was going to gain anything from these people. No. And because of that, God honored David. You see, we have God's promise of heavenly rewards when we show agape love to others. Only through God's agape love can we live a peaceful life in a troubled world. Can you imagine going through life thinking about all the people that have hurt you in your life and what they've done to you, you will run crazy, you see. But when you give it to God, you have the peace. You don't go through life angry and, and just sour because you're thinking about what somebody has done to you, you see. So if you are actually helping yourself, and only through this sacrificial love of God do we have hope of eternity in a heavenly place. Sacrificial love is perpetual. I'm telling you. If you love somebody based on physical love, it finishes there. Natural love, it finishes there. But sacrificial love, it will be, it will be written in God's book. And you will get the reward. You see, let's go to First John chapter 4, verse 10, and I'm going to be reading from Good News Translation. First John chapter 4, verse 10. This is what love is. Listen up. It is not that we have loved God. No. I didn't become a Christian because I loved God. No. It was God himself who first showed love to me. You see. But that he loved us and sent his son to be the means by which our sins are forgiven. You see, our doctor born us to say salvation is a crisis. Sanctification is a process. You see, when I realized that if I continue living in sin, I was headed to hell and I would be, my life here would be useless. Then I was like, oh, I'm done. I'm done with saying, Lord, save me. You see. So it was my, it, it was a reaction or response to the love of Christ that brought me to salvation. It's not because I love Jesus. No. But when you become a child of God, then the love of God now comes to your heart and you begin to love the Lord Jesus. You see. God's love is all the efficiency needed for all life's deficiencies. I am going to back up and say that again. Listen, your husband has got psychosis and is running around on you. That is not the end of the world. No. Or your wife has taken off with a Facebook boyfriend and left you to deal with the children. Listen. The love of God will uphold you. I'm not saying it's easy. No. I'm not saying you, 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 you're not going to be angry. No. 
But you know what? Do not, because of that, shut yourself off or away from God, away from our Lord Jesus Christ. Because God's love is all the efficiencies needed for all life's deficiencies. So what have we done so far? What is love? Love is divided into, into three parts. The first one is physical love. That is a physical attraction based love, which can be polluted as physical circumstances of life change. Natural love, a soulish natural love towards family and friends, which can be punctured due to our human imperfections. Sacrificial love, a supernatural love through the power of the Holy Spirit, which is expressed without expecting anything in return. This type of love, which is perpetual, we help our journey in life and give us reward in heaven. Hallelujah. Are you in search of love? Huh? Are you? Or do you find it difficult to extend selfless love to others? Especially those people that you and I would have loved to say, God, kill them. I'll be killed them. Huh? What you need is God's love to take hold of your heart. That doesn't mean you are going to be drinking coffee with them. No. But instead of saying, God, kill them, you will be praying for them that they will be saved, you see. By asking the Lord Jesus to forgive you of hate and anger towards those who have sinned against you, God will cleanse your heart with his love. By asking God for the grace to show his kind of sacrificial love to others, God will empower you by the Holy Spirit to be able to love those whom you would not have been able to love. And like I said, that doesn't mean you will be having coffee with them. No, because some people, the best thing you can do is stay away from them so they don't injure you more. And to let them, maybe that will wake them up to their behavior. So some people, you have to physically separate yourself from them. I'm not talking marriage. No, that's different. Marriage is a different ballgame. But like friendship or family, in some cases, you have to move, move away from some people. But while you are away, be praying for them. Be praying for them. That is agape love. God's love will come into your heart. If you ask God for it. By asking the Lord Jesus to come into your heart, you will receive this love. The result, listen up, will be peace of mind, a fulfilling spiritual life, having the right perspective of life, a hope of heavenly rewards, and living eternally with Christ Jesus. I like that. Don't you like that? To live with Jesus forever. There is nothing in this world that you can compare to that. Nothing. If you are ready to receive God's love in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, a link is coming up. I'm going to say a quick prayer. Follow that link. We will meet you there because we can only do so much in this half hour program, okay? And God bless you as you do so. Oh, dear Father God, thank you. The Bible says God is love, and indeed you are. Because if not for your love, we were all destined for hell. But your love came and delivered us from the grip of the devil empowered us to continue a Christian journey every day and has given us hope in the new Jerusalem. Oh, Father, we are very grateful. Father, I pray that you bless every listening heart as they are taking decisions, making decisions 
even to follow you or to correct themselves in those areas where you are convicting them, Holy Spirit. Help us, O oh Lord, to be more like our Lord Jesus Christ in every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I will see you next week. Only in Jesus has not split the sky open. Jesus died for us all so we can have life. Come to him and receive life, believe on him and thirst no more. Good News Reporting is all we do, seeing souls saved is our ministry.